Okay, hello everybody. This is Frosty Block 6. It's our very last block that we're doing in this series for our Frosty Goes to Town quilt. Let's see. So we have an hour today. It doesn't look like anyone's connected. Um, hopefully you guys will uh, show up and we'll get this thing started here. If I am by myself today, then it probably won't be a full hour. I don't know what I could do <laughs> unless you just want to watch me sew for an hour. I can do that too. So um, anyway, let's give it about five minutes and we'll see if anyone else is going to join us. It is 10.02. I was having a little bit of connection errors with my computer trying to get on. So if you tried to sign in about five minutes ago, I apologize. I just got in. All right, we'll wait for a few people to show up. All right, well, it's 10.05. Um, I think I'll just, I have my block ready. Hopefully you guys have your blocks ready. Um, I'll do a really quick review and then we'll probably just call it a day. It is a holiday weekend, so I'm not surprised that you guys are not there. Okay, um, so I have everything laid out. I have all my, my pieces are all fused on. And um, yeah, we'll do a little bit of applique. Let's see, um, I think I'll go around the fence first. So okay. let's get started. And I have my stitches set at a 2.0 width and a 2.0 length on my applique stitch. So that's what I've been using all along. So I'll just finish this project up with that stitch and be good with it. I'm using my um, 100 weight thread, so it's very thin. Now I'm coming to the corner, so I will be, see, I'm going to 
do that an angle right there because it didn't line up perfect. And the thread's so thin you can't see it. So it's to work on this. So. There, that stitch went right to the end. That, that's a good thing. See if I can get you guys a little bit closer here. Right. There we go. Well, I really hope you guys are really comfortable at this point with your applique. With this style of applique. I know there are a lot of different styles. There we go. And once I get this fence done, I think I'll do a wheel. So we'll, we'll review the circular once again. Now the next, the next thing that we're gonna do with this is we will be trimming all our blocks down to what it says in the pattern. I don't remember exactly what that was, um, but the measurements are all in your patterns. Oops, yeah, I overshot that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my needle up and I'll just go down right there. And this, with this thread being so thin, you can't see any, really can't see the errors you make. Um, we'll, we'll be um, trimming our blocks up to the finished size that it calls for in the pattern. And then the six blocks will be put together. So you're gonna just sew those together. And then we're gonna start working on borders. Um, if we can get it, we need at least, there's a minimum for the class. So if we can get the minimum amount of people that will take a class on, that are, is interested in borders, then I'm gonna be happy to do um, the border class for you guys so we can finish this quilt up. If not, you are very, very welcome to finish it up if you're welcome or if you're comfortable. There are a lot of stars in the borders and we'll be, so we'll just be um, going over how to do the stars and get points on your stars and then, um, ways to measure up your border, make sure your border lays nice and flat. We'll be going over all that. Um, or you're welcome to just follow the pattern. The pattern has some really good directions on how to do this, except the um, stars. I will not be doing it the way they do it in the pattern. They cut away, they're flying geese, but they cut away the fabric. I don't like doing that. It's, I like leaving it. But anyway, I'll be going over that in the class if we have it. So um, that's an option. Or you guys can, you know, just do it yourself and finish them off. Everyone's quilts are going to be very, very pretty. Or, and you don't have to put stars in the border. You know, if you don't want stars in your border, don't do that. You can just put your borders on there without stars. You may have to get some other fabrics or, you know, you can, because the kits come with a certain amount of fabric. So but you you're welcome to finish your quilts off you know however you like this has been a very fun project i've really enjoyed teaching you guys and going over all this and by doing the class it oops, it made me uh actually finish my project <laughs> I know I get so many projects started sometimes it's hard to finish them. and then I turn around and look and go wow I got quite a few going I better get some of these done that's the stage I'm at right now I got a few and I finished up one two two of them 
this will be the third one so that I'm going to get finished. So I'm doing pretty good. I hope you guys are doing good too. Fix that by just going through a different angle there. If you really mess something up, you can always just, you know, stop, cut your thread, take out a few stitches, and then start up where you where you're so good on your applique if you have to if you really mess up like if you went way out here on you know in the snow or something and it was so far away from your fence that it's really noticeable <laughs> then you would probably want to you know take those stitches out and then on my oh on my snowman his scarf when i cut it i forgot to mirror it and but you know what and i thought you know i'm not cutting that again so I just turned it upside down and his little scarf worked perfect. So, you know, a lot of times you just make things work. Hello, oh, I see someone's here. Is that you, Shell? Good morning, Michelle. It's Shelly. Good morning. I think everyone's on vacation. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's um, a busy weekend. It is. I know. I thought, oh, I wonder if this is a good idea. But it is our last block. And I've just been kind of reviewing some things. You know, so I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and do the fence. And then, um, so, you know, unless you want to stay the full hour, we can do that. But I thought I'd just review a few things. And because um, you guys are pretty well getting this down, aren't you? Yeah, and it's coming together. Oh, that's good. So do you have any questions about anything? You know, I do actually. How... Um, you didn't quilt before you put the applique pieces on. So when you quilt it, are you going to go over the applique or are you going to go around it? Um, on this one, I'm going to go around it. Some applique pieces you can just, well, even this, you could go over it if you wanted. You know, it just depends the look you want. But for this, I would totally go around it. Um, and it's going to make them pop. They're going to really stand out. 
So, and I don't, I don't know if I go, well, you could go really super close a stitch in the ditch right around it, or you could give it like an eighth of an inch. And then that makes, I don't know, it just depends. But I think I'm gonna go around this and I'll probably go about an eighth of an inch away from everything, just because I kind of like that look. It makes it, it looks really puffy then. So are you gonna, um, you're gonna free motion it then, right? Yes. Yes, I will. And like in the snow, I'll probably put like little swirls and stuff that kind of look like snow. And then um, like on the house, I may echo like in, I'll go around the door and then I may do another echo on the inside of the door and maybe like do a little X, you know, look like a door and the windows. Um, I'll go around the window and there's going to be some um, embroidery floss that makes a little cross in there. So I may just do like a little curve inside each of the windows. Um, you know, it's, it's when I always do it. Like I make up my mind when I get there to whatever spot I'm in. And then I figure out when I free motion. Or another thing you could do too is you can take um, like an air erase pen, pen or a water erase pen and mark the quilt. And like if you wanted to do it very linear and, you know, have lines or squares and stuff on there, then you could mark exactly where you're going to do all that with your pencils and then just follow the lines that's really easy too. Then if you go off the line a little bit, doesn't matter because you know, you're gonna take that off. And then it just looks good once the lines are gone. And I was talking earlier about, um, um, there's gonna be a class for the last one and it's not, you know, mandatory or nothing, of course, but um, it's on the border. There's a lot of stars in the border. So we'll be covering um, the stars and how to measure out for your borders and stuff. But there's also, like I said, there was um, in the pattern, you know, it tells you how to do all that stuff too, what, you know, measurements, but. We'll be going over that in class if you want to, to take that class because that's going to be a paid class for the last one. And then we need to have a, a certain amount of people need to sign up, you know. So I'm not really sure when that one's going to be scheduled for. I think I think Jeannie's going to see if we can get the amount of people we need first and then we'll set a date for that one. But I know it won't be too, too long in the future. Right. Oh, I had to cut that. Off. Okay, I didn't want to cut that, but I wanted to tie it, but I did go over, so I think I'm good. Um, okay, let's see. So now I want it. Let me tie off. Let me pull some of that up. There it is. I have so many other projects going. I'm doing really good though. I'm getting a few of them done. So that's very nice. <laughs> that's always nice when you can get some done. It is. It's kind of scary when you look up and go, I have how many projects going? Because I, I do that to myself. I have quite a few too. And um, I think the biggest struggle for this one was not losing the pieces in between. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's been so many months. Um, so I really had to change some organization um, in my sewing room. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like me, I, I have those plastic totes 
Costco used to sell them, but they don't sell them anymore. Um, but I, I use those for my project. You know, I gather everything and leave it in those little boxes, those boxes. And I look around, I'm like, wow, I got like four or five or six of those stacked up. And then I'll have a bag sitting there and a bag will have everything in there too. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I start looking around, and go, how many do I actually have started? So I did inventory earlier this year and I was like, okay, I need to get these done. <laughs> so that's, that's, I think I got like two, two of them done so far. And then this one will be my third one. So it's a good year. I'm getting things done. Let me pull my threads. I need my threads long so I can tie them. Okay, so I reviewed, let's see, we went over the fence. So that's going over, you know, just when you get to little corners and stuff and with the, you know, if I had thicker thread, I would want to go all the way to the corner and make it, you know, if you could see it really good. But like with this really thin thread, if I get close to that, to that point or something, I'll just do it on an angle and go over it and you cannot see the difference at all. So let's see, the next thing I think I want to review is the circle so i'll go around the little wheel or the tires and show you that so i just drop my needle where i want it and then i just take a few stitches and then i'll just turn my project as i go And if it's a tighter circle, like the inside circle, I may um, just take one stitch and turn it a, just a little bit, take another stitch, and then I'll finish off my, the blanket stitch comes there, and I don't move my project during that one. Otherwise, it opens up, you know, and we don't like that. So, but this wheel's a little bit bigger. I don't think I have to move it every stitch. There, see, but now I got my stitch off there. I should have moved it before I did that. There. Too fast. On circles, I like to go really slow too because it makes them look nicer, I think. That's where that automatic foot lifter comes in really handy. I love that for this. If I kind of open that stitch, didn't want to do that. So Michelle, each one of these blocks is going to be size down to um what was it 21 yes yeah, in the pattern um so it's on the outside of the pattern well it's in the pattern let me grab my pattern okay here's here let me pull away right here a little bit okay this is my this is my box six Okay, let's see. Twenty one and three quarters. Okay, there it is right there. Because, like, it shows Frosty goes to town and then pattern six of seven or whatever. It's on every one of them. And this one shows North Pole Express is 17 and a half by 21 and a quarter finished size. And they had us cut these to, for, to 18 inch by 21 and three quarter. So what they did is they gave us an extra half inch because every time when you applicate, not every time, but when you applicate normally what happens is with all the working of the block 
and the ironing and the stitching and everything, it kind of, the block may shrink up a little bit. So they give you that little extra so that when you're done, you can cut it down to what it's supposed to be. And then we'll be putting all six of our blocks together and all six of them will be cut down to the 21 and a half by, excuse me, 17 and a half by 21 and a quarter finished size. You know what? I said that wrong. I just said that wrong. Let me rewind, rewind that, strike that. <laughs> that is, that is weird. They didn't give us any extra. This is the unfinished size, but blocks normally shrink up. See, this is why I want to go over everything with you guys. But I'll, but I'll tell you this, when you, when you cut all your blocks, if measure them all and they should be 18 by 21 and three quarters with when we finish them when you put them together that is the finished size this is the unfinished size. i'm sorry my brain is like i think i'm on vacation <laughs> my brain's on vacation finished size is after it's been sewn together so when it's in the block, if you take the quilt and it's all put together and you measure that block, it's all finished. It'll be 17 and a half by 21 and a quarter. Each of our blocks will be in a finished quilt. That's why it's called finished. The unfinished size is 18 by 21 and three quarters. Now, if you're going to, you've got to put the next step is, is to square up your blocks because see, this is why I like them bigger than normal. Because when I square my blocks up, when you applique them, they normally do shrink up a little bit in size because you're ironing, you've got your heat and bond, and you're doing a lot of work to these blocks. And then you're sewing them so they can get distorted or whatever. So it should be cut down to the unfinished size of 18 by 21 and three quarters. That is the correct way. So please strike what I said before. That is the correct way. So now when you guys are measuring your blocks and say you have 17 and three quarters by 21 and a half or something like that, you want to measure all six of your blocks. The smallest one is going to determine the size of all your blocks because you can't make them any bigger. You know, they are what they are because you want them all to be the same size. Then this is what we're going to get into in class. Because when class starts, we'll have to have those six blocks put together. So we'll be squaring up our blocks, basically. So make sure they're all the same size. Sew those six blocks together so we'll have all of our center part completed. Then in class, we're going to measure. Because now you're in the pattern, it's, I believe it says it's 53 inches for that little gray border there's a border that goes around all the blocks so we can put that on but it may not be 53 inches if your blocks have been cut a little bit smaller if they've shrunk up a little bit during the applique process so that's what we're going to go over in class but you just have to measure them correctly and then we'll be measuring everything and I'll show you how to cut it and all that. Because you don't wanna measure one and have one side of it be 53. And then the other side is 52 and three quarters. We wanna measure them, you wanna have them all the same. But that's what we're gonna go over in class if you guys want to. Or if you guys already know how to do that and you're comfortable with it, then you know, that you're not going to need the class because that's what we're doing. Except we are going over the stars too. So the class will be the stars and the final assembly of the quilt. And then we'll be talking about the quilting and stuff too. You know, if you wanted to free motion those, you can free motion them as a quilt as you go. I suppose that's a whole nother deal. You have to have your backings bigger and all that. And then you would quilt them as a block by themselves. And that really would shrink it up too, though, because then you're having batting in there and stuff. See, there's so many things. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I do not want to. Was that confusing as all get out? No, not at all. I, <clears throat> okay. I totally followed you. I'm glad I asked the question because um, yeah. the finished okay. size, um, I never knew that. That uh, I thought that was the cut size, the 17 and a half by 21 and a quarter. But that yeah. makes sense that that's the finished size in the quilt. Yes. Yeah, you'll see it on a lot of patterns. They always tell you finished, cut, finished and unfinished. So that's what that means. But I'm really, I didn't, yeah. They just gave us, yeah, this is kind of interesting. But so when you cut your blocks and when you square them, because you definitely want to square them up with what we've done to these blocks, there's a lot of work that's been done to them. And that fabric can shift and, you know, it just can. So you want to make sure they're all the same size. And then you'll have a nice, even quilt because if you don't with especially like with the sf 101 on the back and all the pieces if it's down by the snow if you have something that you know this box bigger than the other one and you're trying to fit it in on the square and and you know if you're quilting and all you have is just fabric you know you'll get a pucker in your fabric and sometimes that's okay and you're like you know what i can live with that pucker i don't care or you can stretch the fabric a little bit and it has like a little wrinkle in it and it's not actually a pucker and it still looks good and you can make it work and once that quilt is washed you're not going to see it anyway after all is said and done and that works out a lot of times but with this having as much on this quilt as we do um that's not going to be an option you're going to have a big pucker or something it, it's gonna there's going to be a big thing there and you don't want to do that so you really need to square these blocks up all the same size so that when you do put them together they all work together so they play together really nice <laughs> for lack of a better term okay so there's my wheel I got my wheel. I did open up my stitches. I don't know if you can see that. Somehow I got my stitches open. I must have been turning it or something, but it's not enough that I'm going to rip it out. I think it looks good just the way it is. So I'm leaving it. So I'm going to turn that over and I will pull my threads through. I can find where they are. Where they are. Okay, my brain's on vacation and my eyes don't work. <laughs> Can barely see this thread. Okay, there. Jeez Louise. Oh no, I still missed one. Okay, I'm gonna have to thread it. Yeah, I have, I think I mentioned before, I have this little camper quilt I'm working on and it's got applique. And I swear, I think I've been working on it since like 2017 or 2018 and the thread is black to, to do the applique and it looks so cute but that's another one of my projects that I want to finish up wow 2017 <laughs> I know and I even have a little note sitting next to next to my sewing machine of the width and the length on it you know for my stitch <laughs> So I still have, I was looking at that going, well, what is that for? And I went, oh my gosh, that's another one I still have going. So yeah, I need to uh, get these projects done without starting new ones. <laughs> okay, so here's this other wheel. Now this is the inside wheel. So I better be a little bit more careful with this one. The smaller they get, the more you need to adjust your fabric so that it looks nice. Oh, oh darn. I messed that one up. I wonder if I can back that up. Oh, I can. 
Kane, I don't do that, but I did turn my hand. I turned my hand wheel. It just went down. So I turned my hand wheel back the other way, which you're never supposed to do. But there, now I'm where I want to be. I just scooted it over. So don't be doing that. Or you guys might, you know, I don't want to. I shouldn't be showing you guys bad things. <laughs> But it was only once if you if that bobbin if that hook on that bobbin completes that stitch see the with the needle just going down it's like the hook was right there so i backed the hook off is what i did and it released the stitch so i was able to take it out but if it had gone to the next stitch it would have been too late and i couldn't have done that But I am ready to have this quilt done. It feels like we've been working on it forever. But it'll be ready for Christmas. Yay! Yeah, it will be fun to put it all together. I, I actually made two of them. And <gasps> On one of them, I did um, the quilting before I did the applique, and oh, I you just, did. Mm -hmm. I used um, clear blue tiles. Oh yeah. And then I um, I put it in components. Um, so I put it like in four quadrants. Uh huh. I resized the design, um, the quilting design, to match those four components. Yeah. And um, it came out, uh, I really like the look of the background quilting and then the applique on top. It came out really nice. So for the other one that I didn't quilt, I'm like, gosh, how am I going to quilt this one now? <laughs> oh, <laughs> free motion, free motion. Yeah. Are you comfortable with free motion? No, not at all. Um, no, I, that's a skill that I just, I don't, I don't have yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you'll get some practice on it. <laughs> yeah. Or you out to be quilted. Someone can stick it on their long arm and I mean, that's what I do. So I, that's what I'm going to do with mine. <laughs> so, but yeah, when you free motion, I'll give you a tip on your free motion. When you start free motion, mm -hmm. you have uh, one of these levers on there on your, I don't know what machine you have that, so it can go really slow or really fast. Do you have one of those? Yeah, I have a luminaire. Oh, uh, okay. So what you want to do, because um, you'll drop your feed dogs and I think this is a crescendo, but I'm sure you have the same. Let me see. Do you see? Um, can you see, it's going to look something like that. Do you see that, that little icon? Mm -hmm. You have something like that on yours. When you, when you push that, that drops your feed dogs. Yeah. And then, so, so when you free motion, you drop your feed dogs because you're not using those at all. And then what you do, oops. Then what you do is because when you free motion, you're moving where you want to go and you're also using your foot pedal to adjust the pressure so you go slow and fast and you have to it's like driving a car a stick shift you know when you push in the clutch and then you push in the gas and you got to go you know you go and you're letting out your clutch do you mm -hmm. drop the stick at all yeah okay so it's the same thing with your free motion so the tip I'll give you is, and I always give everybody this, is take your speed control, set it on as slow as you can go because you're just starting. And whatever you're quilting, make up a quilt sandwich that matches as a sample what you're doing. Then what with your speed on slow, 
you can take out one of those components. You can just put your pedal to the metal on with your foot. Boom, that's it. So you don't have to be adjusting your speed. You can just put pedal to the metal and then you can work on your hand work and moving it around to how you want to get it to where you can get nice swirls and stops and goes and stuff. Hmm. Be a lot of times when you're doing the foot, and it's like people trying to learn to drive a stick. It, it, it's hard. So if you can take out one of those components, you can learn your free motion that way. Then when you get, and maybe you'll even always do that. You might get to a point where, you know, that's way slow. So I'm going to put my speed about right here. And then even with pedal to the metal, that speed is very consistent for me and I'm used to it. And that's how I go. And then you can, because you need to move, you can't go like really fast and then slow because you'll spit your stitches will be really tight here and you go fast and they're really, really long. So mm -hmm. you have to get a nice rhythm to where you're just going exactly the same speed with your hands. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, good. Good. But even that way, it takes practice, practice, practice. And then you have to practice some more. <laughs> and then you have to just go for it. <laughs> because if you never go for it, it'll never get done. So you have to just go for it. And then you'll show people and they'll, you'll look at it and go, Oh my God, look at all the errors. But people will look at it and go, that is beautiful. So don't be hard on yourself. Just go for it and you'll do it. You'll do good too. A lot of people love free motion. They have long arms that are just for free motion. The sit down long arms, it's just free motion because you're moving that quilt instead of stabilizing the quilt, and moving the machine, you're just moving the quilt. So yeah, that's not me though. That is not me. <laughs> I have, I have a long arm where I load the quilt and then I move the machine. So that works for me. But a lot of people do it. And if you can get it down, it's really fun. And it can be very, very beautiful. Do you ever watch Angela Walters? No, I've never seen that. You've never heard of her? Mm -mm. She's kind of a big needle in the quilt world. You should YouTube her. She does like nothing but free motion quilting. And she gives you a lot of tips and tricks. And, and her stuff is really, really, really nice. Oops. Off the edge there. Let's see. Oh, I I'm like, why am I not going very fast? <laughs> I had to redo my speed. Yeah, they have rulers and everything that you can get for free motion. And uh, let me see. I don't think I have any here because I do some free motion at home. I have a destiny. So I know it's, yeah, I have, they have a special foot. I'm looking at my drawers here. I don't, no, I don't have it, but they have a special foot. Let me see. Let me get one of my other rulers. And they have them for free motion. So you'll get, um, there's a special foot and it's a thick foot. And it's like, I think it's a quarter inch thick or something. And it's like a little round foot. You can also get an open toe. 
like your darning foot is open toe. What's mine? Do I have one here? It's hard when you have stuff at home and then it's, oh, here it is. See, and I think you might have like this one on your luminaire, but that's really, really thin. And that's for free motion. Um, but if you use rulers now that a normal ruler, let me get a normal ruler. Oh, I got a normal ruler right here. No, I do because I just put it in here. Just has to find it. Here it is. Oh, that's. See what happens when you're not prepared. <laughs> you're totally prepared. You're like answering a question that you probably weren't even going to do. I appreciate you showing me those rulers. Those are cool. Well, here's, I have this a new ruler. I haven't even opened it yet. But anyway, this is a regular ruler. This is one of my square up rulers. I love these. Anyway, see the, the width on it. And like the width for this, you know, you don't want to use that because it's a hopping foot. And when it, the needle, when it come, the foot comes up, it can hop right over that ruler. And then your needle can hit the ruler and... We all know that is not a very good outcome. So when you have quilting rulers, and this is the same for my long arm, look at how much wide, thicker this ruler, it's a quarter inch thick at least, these rulers. Here's another, here's a straight ruler. It's a stitch in the ditch ruler. So I don't know if you can see that, it's really clear, but anyway, it's, they're thick. They're really thick. Oh, I got a hopping part. It's for my long arm, but I'll show you. because it's kind of the same thing you can get. I think there, I have a clear one for my destiny. I think um, Jeannie sells these too. Okay, so see here, this is for my, I have a gamel and that's these, but it's a quarter inch thick at least. And then the open toe for that is like that, but it's still really thick. So when my ruler, when it glides along the ruler and it hops, it won't go over that ruler. And you also need to have, well, on the long arms, they have a, um, a plate that goes on there. You got to stick it on the arm of the long arm before you start. It's a ruler plate. So your rulers sit nice and flat on it so that the hopping foot goes like that. And it will not come up. It, it doesn't hop a quarter inch. It may hop like, you know, an eighth of an inch high because you got to set your needle bar and all that stuff. So that's what you want. They do sell these, and then they also sell rulers just for this. And let me see. You know what I'll show you? Let me take this. My, I have my dog in here, if you see my dog. <laughs> um, take my phone out of this deal. We're about done with class anyway, so I'm going to. Okay, see, there's my dog. Aww. He's like 14 years old. Oh my gosh, okay. look at your setup. That is amazing. Yeah, I have, this is my shop. Oh, here's, here, uh, my husband's shop's next door, but this is my long arm. I don't have anything on it right now, um, but I've been pumping quilts off that. Anyway, wow. this, this is, I don't know how well you can see it. it's above my door. Um, right there. Can you see the quilting like on that lower block? Uh huh. I sure can. I can. Yeah, those are from rulers, and I did that on my destiny. And then let me see if you can see the other blocks. I did some freehand and stuff, and then I take my straight rulers and and did that. So uh, you can totally do that, and it's really. They, they sell the rulers just for that. And I think Jeannie, Jeannie may have some of those. But you want to get the thick ones because you don't want your needle to be hitting these rulers. You'll ruin the ruler and your needle will go somewhere and hopefully you have eye protection. And, you know, I mean, it's just like all bad news all the way around. But um, 
yeah to practice free motion once you get set up you're like oh man this is fun because i did like that and you just have to have patience you know it's no race getting it done because you will sit there and it will take you a while to learn and but it can be very very rewarding and you can you can pump out quilts that look like they've been on a long arm and that you've paid someone a lot of money to do. So, oops. so yeah, it's all there. You just have to do it. <laughs> That's the tough part. I wish I would have brought, I could have brought those too and showed you but. I got a bunch of those rulers. Now I want to do some of that. But you know, now you got you left your back. Did you leave your backing bigger? Yeah, I did the the second set that I did. Um, the squares I cut much larger. Oh, good. Um, yeah, they're they're a lot bigger. Um, and then the batting um, was you know outside. Yeah. Yeah, because did you know that? Because that was a quilt as you go. The one I was showing you. And then, and you can put them together without, I put that little, um, little bit of sashing to where you can see it on the front and the back. Cause that's just the quilt I was going for. Oh, mm -hmm. let me show you. I'm going to show you another one because I have another one too that I did. Do you have any extra of that gray material? I do. Because here's another one. And this one was a quilt as you go also. Oh, that's really pretty. Yeah, that was all paper pieced. And I, I didn't use rulers on that one. You can't see the quilting on it. But what I did, there's still sashing there, but I used the same fabric. Oh, wow, I see that, yeah. Let me see if I can get any closer. It's way up on the wall. <laughs> yeah no I can see it um oh. can you see any of the quilting um a little bit on the bottom one yeah and then that because it's really hard I can see it good right here but yeah so I can't really see but that's um, really pretty. So, thank you so that's something you can do too um, I can turn this around. You can see me. <laughs> so you can do two and um, just use that gray fabric. Um, do you know how to put them together? Um, yeah. Okay. 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 Here, I'm going to turn this back around. Okay, there. Oh, we're almost done. <gasps> we're almost done with all our blocks. Okay. Michelle, that. thank you so much. I um I really enjoyed the class and learned a lot. So thank you so much for all your time. And I'm gonna go ahead and go and okay. Well, you are so welcome. I really enjoy this. I enjoy sharing stuff with people. So I'm glad you learned stuff. And you know, if you ever have any questions, I'd be very happy to help you with stuff still. So, you know, don't don't hesitate to call jeannie's got my cards and stuff if you want so she's got my number you yeah your out. shop looks amazing i'd love to see that someday <laughs> thank you are you in town i'm not i live um up in Truckee, but i do get down every so often oh okay yeah people bring me quilts from tahoe and everything so yeah if you're ever in reno just give me a call. You are more All right. <laughs> Thanks again, Michelle. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And I want to thank everyone who sees this video. Um, thank you so much. And I hope to see you in class. You know, if you guys need help with bindings or anything. Oh, or not All the right. bindings, but the borders. The borders. So. <laughs> okay, well, you take Happy care. And thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>